What's up guys, Axis here, back with another tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to recreate something inside X Particles in Cinema 4D. Uh, this was originally created by somebody called Mario on uh, Vimeo, and it's called X Particles 3 Flip Splash. It's a really interesting sim, there's tons and tons of particles uh, simulated in this, in his version. Uh, I'm going to be doing something a little more simpler, um, I just um, did this pretty recently. So um, this is, I, I cached this in about, I'd want to say maybe two minutes. Um, so as you can see they build up and they explode, just like his one. But obviously this is kind of like the, the discount version, you know. <laughs> um, so I'll leave a link to his original one in the in the description, make sure you go and check that out. I don't want to put it here because, um, you know, I don't, wanna, I don't want you to just see it and then not go and check out his one. So yeah. Uh, this was cached really quickly. Of course, um, this has really not got that many um, particles involved. Only 5,000. Normally, I'd want to be using, you know, like 20,000 or 30,000. I mean, that his one looks like it's using like 50,000 or something crazy like that. And I don't have the uh, the patience or even probably the disk space to cache that. <laughs> so, um, yeah, let's get started. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the cube. Uh, by the way, I'm, I'm using this uh, this cool thing. The shortcut is Shift C. Okay, so first off, we're going to bring uh, a display tag onto this, so we can actually see what's going on. We're going to use a where is it? I want to use a line, yeah. And then what we're going to do is we're going to bring an XP system, and we're going to bring an emitter, yeah, not like kind of emitter XP emitter. Drag that into the emitter, and then we're going to put this as an object. We're going to change the emit from to polygon area. We're going to drag this uh, edited, editable cube, which we can call emitter just to help everybody, into here. Uh, it can emit from any fong angle. Uh, we're going to increase the composition size to 250 frames, and we are also going to uh, increase the speed to 1500 and the birth rate to 5000. Now, then I'm going to add an XP collision or collider tag to our emitter, which is going to be on the inside. So if I click play here, we've got a lot of particles going crazy. Uh, it's, it's a lot faster than it should be because we're going to add an XP domain later, which will we'll slow it down, which is basically like simulating fluid. Um, and we're gonna now. I want to see if I've forgotten anything. Oh yeah, we don't emit for the full lifespan. Uh, what I decided to do was I decided the uh, explosion to be in 135, so around here. So if I make the lifespan 135, make sure the variation is on zero, so everything explodes on the same frame or stops emitting on the same frame. And then from here, uh, that's us done with the emitter, and we can go into the modifiers. Let's add a turbulence first because it's in this menu and I'm going to change it to 50 on the strength and 120 on the frequency. That's all I did there. And I added an XP gravity. Um, and I want this to actually be uh, only em emitting from the outside of this box. So I'm going to put the fall off to zero and I'm going to invert this. So if I click play, obviously the gravity isn't affecting it. If I turn this to infinity, well, it should have fallen down, but something's happening there. Um, basically, I only want the, I only want it to affect outside the box. Um, also, if you're using a logo, um, which will require more, um, a, a lower voxel size, which will increase render time and and the disk space you'll need to cache it, um, you will want to use a kill. So I can't actually remember what that. I think it's in control. Yeah, kill. So I'm going to do outside box and I think I also, yeah, turn it off at here. So I go enable, next frame is off. So anything outside this box um, will be killed. So if you've got a logo, then I put this roughly around your logo and any particles that fall out of it uh, will be um, destroyed, which is pretty good. So, uh, there's one more effector we need in here, which uh, I can't remember, so I'm going to check here. Okay, 
um, explode. So that's the most important one. Um, I was forgetting the most important one there. So what we need is explode, go to object. And I turned this up really high. I think it was like 2.5 thousand or 25 thousand. I mean, that's quite a big difference. So uh, I'm gonna go and check. Uh, I can't find it. Oh, I can't. Yeah, it was it was two point five thousand. So we got that here. Um, and we are going to make it. Oh wait, no, no. I think you. I can't remember if I used a, a fall off or not. But I'm thinking that I will use one because it's only going to explode. Uh, in fact, no, I'm going to use infinite. We'll see, we'll see, we can change it later. But um, I'm gonna ch enable this at 135, or 136 I mean, and have it disabled in 135. Uh, and the speed will um, go down to zero from, where we'll start at 136 at um, 2500, and go down to zero by 179, 180, something like that. Okay. So now it will explode, but nothing's happening because it's still contained within this. So we're going to actually need to animate our collider tag. I don't know if there's a better way of doing this. I mean, I think this is the best way of doing it or the best way I could find of doing it. You can either disable this or what I like to do was uh, change the normals to the outside. So what will happen is everything will explode uh, and th um, and all the particles in here will not collide on the inside. So they'll, they'll bounce out, and then when they bounce back, they'll bounce off the emitter, which is pretty cool. Um, it creates quite a nice effect. So now, if we play this back, we should actually see the explosion happening. So we got it, and then we've got you know you can see the the gravity happening, all that good stuff. Um, and now one of the most important uh, effectors. XP domain. I think that's in dynamics. And I didn't change anything here. Um, you can mess about with these. One of the most important things if you're using if you're using a logo or something that's highly subdivided is you decrease the voxels which will keep the uh, which will make the simulation actually work. Otherwise the, the particles are more likely to fall out um, from your object but since I'm using something as simple as a cube. Um, I'm not going to have any of those issues, even with a voxel size, size of 20. You could probably up it from 20 as well, I just haven't really experimented with it all that much. Now we've got a really small tank here. As you can see, the uh, the render time is kind of tanking. Um, and you can imagine how slow it will be if I've got, you know, uh, even more particles. So that's the basis of it. And all I need to do now is, is increase the uh, the tank size by dragging these um, little parameter tag thingies uh, and we can create a camera that's not a camera why would you not select the normal camera um, and then I'm going to go to the coordinates I'm going to keep the Y and then I'm going to make this a minus 90 so we're looking down onto the um, the simulation like in the original video on Vimeo so now we should see 135, this will explode and we'll have all the particles hitting off the sides. And it looks really, really nice when you've got tons and tons of particles in here. You can even add trails um, and you could even mesh it if you, if you dared, you know, because it'll probably absolutely ruin your CPU if you were to use a Skinner object on this. Um, so yeah, uh, then all we want to do is we're going to want to add an XP cache. cache. Um, if you've got uh, duplicates of anything, like you've got two XP turbulences, it'll give you a warning. So just change it to like XP turbulence one, something like that. And that will fix the issue. Uh, and then you just build the cache um, and you can render it out. I mean, you can render it out without doing that. I just like to build a cache so I can see the uh, final result. Um, so thanks for watching guys, um, 
like if you enjoyed or if this helped you subscribe for more content like this if you have any tutorial suggestions like if you want me to recreate something obviously i'll credit the person <laughs> um then just put a comment down below uh, if you need any help post comments down below and i will try and help you or someone else might help you first um if i don't know the answer obviously um which is more likely um and i'll see you in the next video thanks for watching